Welcome back to my Let's Play of Final Fantasy II for the Famicom system. Last episode, Fess, Maxine, and Booker uh, made their way uh, toward Finn, where they're looking to find their friend Leon. They were told that uh, someone was being held captive in uh, Finn, which was the rebel's old capital. They stopped uh, halfway there at uh, Galtia, a small little village, and they rested up. Now it's ready for them. Now it's time for them to make their final push toward Finn. Now, uh, in the episode, uh, I kind of mentioned that I was going to have Fess be um, the white mage, and I'll explain why I chose that. Uh, here, we got some downtime. Uh, there's a bug in the game that when uh, enemies start using spells and casting them on the party, sometimes it causes Fess's uh, spirit stat to grow up. And spirit is the stat that uh, determines the effectiveness of white magic. Uh, it's also um, one of those stats that are linked to strength, so sometimes it can go down if strength goes up. So that's one of the uh, disadvantages, though, of having uh, Fess be the white mage, because he'll be swinging his sword and trying to gain some strength. Another disadvantage uh, is that because he has a sword and a shield, he's going to take penalties to uh, his effectiveness as white magic. Weapons have uh, penalties associated with magic, uh, the accuracy of the spells. So, shields have a massive penalty of 70%, um, knives have a small, usually around like 5%, then staves, um, usually around 20%. Uh, javelins are next with about 40%, swords and axes usually around 50%, and um, bows have a massive um, penalty of 70%. Uh, so, I guess it's going with the old D&D, uh, &D, you know, wizards have knives or, or staves, you know. Uh, they're not swinging swords and axes around. Uh, but, um, so you might think, well, why are you even bothering to train um, Fess up then with um, weapons? and uh, raises your deal with the shield. Well, because we can mitigate uh, the penalties by de-equipping the weapon and shield during battle through the item command. And we want to have Fess gain uh, agility because uh, the preemptive uh, strike rate is determined by Fess's agility. So we want to have Fess gain a lot of agility so that uh, toward the end of the game we get more preemptive strikes against the enemies. Uh, preemptive strikes being where we attack them before they get a round of combat in. So, um, it's going to behoove him to um, get that agility. So, eventually, though, we're going to get a knife that's going to function as a shield. Uh, the Mangoshe. Mangoshe. Uh, and uh, so that'll cut down the penalty on the shield. And the best sword in the game has a 0% penalty. So, we can enter the castle here. Do a quick save here real quick. Uh, just to show. Uh, we were told you got to be careful in, in this town. And I'll show you why you need to be careful. So just make a quick save. That's an interesting thing, too. We can save anywhere in this game uh, on the overworld map. So we were told to look at that pub. Uh, so it's on the outskirts of town. All the other shops in here, no one's uh, doing business. So don't bother going into any of the shops. You also don't want to talk with any of these uh, people patrolling around. Rebel curs. Because that'll initiate a battle with a captain. Uh, captains are level 5 enemies. Uh, so as you can see, they hit really, really hard. There's no way we can take these guys out. We're having trouble with level 1 enemies outside. Yeah, these guys are just going to one-shot us all. So Now you can touch them. As long as you don't press A to talk with them, uh, you're okay, uh, which is a blessing because when we get to that pub, there's going to be a ton of them in there. So yeah, just, just make sure you don't press the A button to talk with them, uh, and you'll be okay. However, uh, you still got to be careful in town because there are monsters in town. Remember they said that the uh, Empire has uh, monsters working for them? So yeah, we will get some encounters in the town here, but they're all the same uh, stuff that we encounter on the outside, so uh, not too much of a problem. So now, uh, now getting back to the weapons, I was talking about... Uh, you know, how I have uh, everyone kind of doing swords, basically. Uh, Maxine's not having a weapon. Uh, and my fourth characters will always be getting bows. Uh, bows because bows can hit from the back row. And by putting the fourth character in the back row with the bow, that means they're not going to be taking hits. They're not going to be dodging hits. Uh, so uh, it won't uh, mess up with our uh, agility growths and evasion uh, growths. So we want our characters to get targeted uh, so they get that agility growth uh, to uh, an evasion percentage growth, so they can you know dodge attacks. So that's basically the you know the key to survival. 
uh, in this game, building your agility and evasion. So, uh, but going back to the to the weapons, uh, because I knew that the best sword in the game and uh, the eventual knife would be going on Fess, uh, he wouldn't have to worry too much about his uh, the penalty when he gets a uh, uh, you know high level uh, white magic. So, and uh, swords are pretty common uh, in the game, uh, and they uh, they also have elemental properties to them. So they can hit weaknesses. The uh, thing actually works in this game. Bleeding imperials are nothing but an ill-bred rabble. Ah, you're with the rebels. There's a secret door in this wall. A wounded soldier is inside. So yeah, we have to give this guy the wild road password. And he's going to let us into this little secret area where uh, a wounded soldier is. Could it potentially be Leon? Let's find out. So we walk into the wall. And we head on down this little uh, pathway here. We're gonna get uh, some treasure here, some uh, some potions, which is good because we sold all of the, the one potion we did got earlier. But that doesn't look like Leon. It looks like a red mage. If you're going to turn me over to the Empire, kill me first. Let's say Wild Rose to him. So you're the rebels, right? I'm Prince Scott of Kushan. That's uh, Gordon's brother. All right. Prince Scott, we were told you didn't make it. I'm barely alive. I have a favor to ask. Tell my brother Gordon that he's strong and needs more faith in himself. Also, the king must know that the reason Finn lost is because Count Borgen betrayed us. He's now a general in the Imperial Army. And tell Hilda that I love her. No, no, don't deliver that last message. The confessions of a dying man, they would only bring her pain. My brother, Leon, have you heard news of him? I'm sorry, but I have not. Here, I want you to, to take my ring. I'm sure it will be of use. I'm grown extremely tired. If you'll excuse me, I just need to rest for a little while. We get Scott's ring, and that's going to be like a... Uh, that item has two functions. Uh, one, it's going to uh, trigger the next sequence. Uh, we're going to use it like a key word. And it also functions as the map of the game. I guess it's inlaid with like a little globe stone. So yeah, once you get outside, we can press uh, B select. So very similar to the first game. Uh, hinting at thing that something that's not similar to the first game is the elemental properties actually work in this game. So if you have a fire sword and attack an enemy that's weak against fire, you gain plus 20 to your attack. Uh, so yeah, they've actually coded the elemental swords right. So there's a lot of elemental swords in the game, so that'll help boost attack. So even though swords might be a little weaker than some things like, say, axes, uh, the, uh, the fact that you get that plus 20 bonus when attacking an enemy, uh, weak against the element of the sword, uh, makes swords really, really good. Spears are also good for that, uh, function too, because there's a lot of elemental spears. So my first playthrough that I, I did of this, uh, I actually had, uh, Fess with, um, a spear. Uh, he was spear and shield, uh, so, uh, spears worked out, you know, pretty good like that, but I figured, you know, hey, with the, the penalties and stuff like that, the uh, swords will end up uh, being better. So you get, like, uh, plenty of, plenty of swords. Um, axes are pretty, uh, powerful, but there's a problem, uh, in the middle of the game, uh, the availability of axes is really, really bad, uh, and so you're stuck with, like, a weak end axe for, uh, quite some time, uh, where you're getting, like, uh, new swords or new spears, uh, to compensate, so... Axes, you know, not that really good. Uh, bows, like I said, are really, really good. Uh, my first, like I said, playthrough, I had, uh, Maxine with a bow, uh, so she would be in the back row, so when she ran out of spell points, uh, she would just hit stuff with the bow. Uh, but I'm altering things up to have the fourth character now uh, use the bow because uh, I did have some success with the fourth character using a bow. Uh, another thing in uh, in some instances, uh, knives they have that really uh, low magic penalty. Uh, same with the staves, uh, so they're pretty good for your wizards. But the problem is uh, they tend to be uh, both of them tend to be very very weak, uh, so they don't deal a lot of damage. 
So I'm just going to uh, stick with having uh, my uh, black wizard Maxine there uh, without a weapon so she can function on all of her uh, spells. So when I was working on just uh, building her uh, weapon level and her spell levels up, I didn't end up getting all the elemental spells. I just stuck with uh, Blizzard and Fire because uh, we end up getting a fourth character that has lightning later on. Uh, so I didn't need uh, to really focus on lightning. Uh, but this way I'll get to uh, just focus on building up her spells, uh, not to worry about uh, her weapons. And the agility that she'll be missing out on growing without a shield ain't gonna matter because she'll eventually be in the back row. Uh, like I said, I just have her in the front row right now so that she you know, takes a few hits, uh, gains some hit points uh, just to increase her survivability. Uh, Speaking of taking hits, uh, there's another small little bug in the game. Uh, there's a targeting bug. And uh, in the first game, uh, whoever was in the front row, uh, the first slot, would take 50% uh, of the attacks. And then whoever was in the second slot took 25%, and then the third and the fourth took about 12.5% uh, attacks. Uh, it's kind of a little messed up in this. I don't have the exact percentages. But uh, the targeting actually... Uh, it tends to ignore the person in the front uh, slot, so Fess isn't going to be targeted as much as uh, both Maxine and Booker. Uh, that's why you'll notice that uh, Maxine has uh, lower health right now because she's been getting hit a lot more, uh, where Fess hasn't been taking any damage. Uh, so, uh, but eventually though, uh, we will uh, increase Fess's chances of getting targeted to you know help raise his uh, evasion and agility. Uh, when we move Maxine to the back row, because remember, characters in the back row can't be targeted by physical attacks uh, unless everyone in the front row is knocked out. So it's going to force more uh, uh, characters, more enemies, to uh, attack Fess. So, but that you know, like I said, that's uh, that's for the for the future. You know, right now while the enemy is kind of weak, we just want to uh, build up everybody's. Uh, hit points, so, especially since we're running around without any armor on, so, you know, let's take the hits while uh, we can. Uh, eventually, you know, uh, enemies will get pretty strong, and if we ain't building our agility up, uh, they'll hit us for uh, a bunch of damage, since we're not wearing that armor, so. So, once again, uh, you, you see the, the columns of enemies, uh, we couldn't target the ones in the back row there unless we used magic, so. Just uh, remember that, so. But we're just making our way back. Ooh, take some damage there. That's uh, pretty nice. We, like I said, we want to try to get as much uh, hit points as possible. So, like I said, I'm not really doing grinding, but the only kind of grinding that I guess I will sort of be doing uh, is whenever I get uh, close to, and I'm only going to do it basically at the beginning of the game, is basically whenever I get close to a town, um, since I'm going to obviously stay at the end to heal up, uh, I'm going to try to uh, use up all my magic points with Maxine to uh, increase the chance that she gets uh, a magic point up, so, so she can cast more spells. Uh, spells, uh, they cost uh, magic points equal to their level. So right now, Maxine's Blizzard spell is at level 1, so it's only costing 1 MP to cast. When it goes up to level uh, 2, it'll cost 2, uh, and so forth and so on. Same with the white magic. Uh, so it'll be uh, more effective, but it will cost a, a little bit more. So The max spells that you can get, uh, the max level you can get in the game is uh, 16. And uh, it's really, really hard to get that unless you're like... Uh, super, uh, you know, grinding, uh, abusing, because uh, character level, uh, the enemy levels, uh, most of them only get to about to level 7. So I found without, like, grinding, uh, when I did no grinding, when the, like, my test run, uh, most stats got to around level 9, uh, level 10. Uh, for instance, Booker, he just used sword and shield the whole time. He ended up getting uh, sword level up to, and shield level up to 10. Uh, Fury on there, uh, who was Fess's character, uh, he, uh, since he used spears and, and white magic, his spears got up to, like, level 7, and his magic spells got to around, like, 6 or 7, too. Uh, Maxine had about uh, level 7 in bows, and had uh, her spells usually, like, 8 or 9, so... 
God said, the, the, the rank of the enemy uh, determines uh, how much experience you get. And I'll talk about the formula uh, in a future episode. It's not that important right now uh, because all our skills are level 1 and all the enemies are fighting are level 1. It just gets more important when uh, our skills get higher than the enemy levels. So... So we're just going to take out some goblins here. Goblins are pretty good enemies to fight uh, in the early game here. Of course, you can't determine who you fight, uh, but they're the best for uh, gaining uh, gill. Uh, enemies have, uh, oh, kind of weird in this game, they have uh, eight different uh, treasures they can drop. Uh, so uh, these goblins can drop anywhere from 6 to 50 gill. Obviously, 50 gill is, you know, rarer uh, than the 6 gill. But yeah, they have a, a random table drop uh, of eight. Uh, some enemies uh, have items in that table drop as well. Uh, and I'll be putting down like, you know, I just saw I put like enemies what they drop. So uh, like I said, if you get really lucky and all the goblins roll on their treasure table, uh, you know, the 50 gill, you can make uh, a lot of gill. Uh, but like I said, we have really no control. So yeah, look, 131 gill from, you know, four goblins, not bad, so. That's good, because like I said, gill is very, very important at the beginning of the game, so... Alright. So let's uh, show uh, Gordon here his brother's ring. So we're gonna go, rather than use the ask command, we'll just go to items, and we can select it from the thing. That ring was my brother Scott's! So... Just like a keyboard. I'm putting all the key items at the bottom of the thing. Because uh, once you use them, you basically don't use them again, so it just clears up the inventory for more items, important items that we're going to use, like potions and stuff. So let's talk with Hilda. Let's do the same thing we did with uh, Gordon. We'll show uh, her the ring. That ring, it's Scott's. Is he alive? He gave us this ring in Finn just before he lost the last of his strength. Did he say anything? No, nothing, Your Highness. Please keep this ring. No, you keep it. You infiltrated Finn and returned safely. I underestimated you. Perhaps you can help us. Help us find the rare mithril for our army's equipment. So let's learn the mithril, and then we will uh, ask mithril. We lost Finn because the Empire had weapons made of mithril. A rebel in Salaman named Joseph is looking for mithril, but he hasn't reported it back. Will you go with Min Wu to Salaman to look for him? Take my canoe and let us be on our way. Let's ask him... Uh, these things. So, yeah, now Min has joined our party. Bring Mithril back to Altier. Off to Salmon, go east to Plume, and then take a ship from there. You'll never make it there on foot. Well, we're gonna go on foot because, uh, we want to gain some experience. So, in Bast, they're building Dreadnought to compensate for those losses. Let's learn Dreadnought, and then let's ask about the Dreadnought. The Empire is using the people of Bast to build the Dreadnought. The Dreadnought is a massively heavily armed airship. Let's learn airship. Let's ask about the airship. A man named Sid, former leader of Finn's White Knights, built an airship. He became obsessed with this airship and flew away from Finn. He now lives in Poft, granting travelers the passage on his airship for a fee. He used this money to make further refinements to his airship. So yeah, sometimes we saw an airship flying around there. So yeah, this is actually the uh, first game that has a Sid in it. So The weapons that the Rebellion has are no match for the Empire's because they have better uh, equipment, better uh, gear, mithril gear. Let's go talk with the king here. See what he has to say. So we've lost Scott. He was going to propose to Hilda, you know. I always thought he'd make a fine husband for her. Long ago, Mithra was in common use. Mithra was mined in the north near Semit Falls. What? The Empire's building what? No one told me of that. I see it. They didn't tell me for fear of worrying me. And he has nothing to say about the airship. And the king is most pleased with our work. Well, that's good. So, so is Hilda. She's given us more missions to uh, undertake. We're going to be a key part of the rebellion. The Empire has enslaved the town of Basque and is forcing them to build a dreadnought. We'll end up going there in a little bit. Use the canoe to cross the lake to the east to reach Palum. Palum and Poft are kind of like sister cities. You can find some mithril and give the code Tobol. He'll be able to make some superb weapons. Tobol is that blacksmith in the weapon shop. Where's, uh, Paul, the ninja? Hmm. Keep that in mind. Let's tell, uh, Gordon some of these key words. Mithril, in Kashun, Scott had inherited a mithril sword that he had been handed down through the ages. 
It was truly a magnificent blade. I've heard the rumors. If the dreadnought is completed, it will destroy everything. But what can I do to stop it? I couldn't even save my own brother. Uh, so there's a uh, in the Game Boy Advance remake of this game. Will the war ever end? Uh, there's a bonus scenario called Soul of Rebirth, and in that you get to play as Scott, and uh, he comes with a Mithril sword. So, Mithril, what's that? Does it taste good? I'm a little kid doesn't know what Mithril is. <laughs> Let's tell Tubal about Mithril. If I had some Mithril, I can make finer equipment. Finer and really expensive equipment. So we're gonna have to be saving up our money, but we'll be able to get some uh, new equipment soon. So get a slight upgrade. So we do got a small upgrade with uh, Min here. Uh, Min is pretty powerful. Uh, he's a white mage. Uh, he has a lot of white uh, magic spells and at pretty high level. So you guys can see he's uh, pretty powerful there. 175 hit points, 103 magic points. So uh, we're going to rely on him quite a bit. We're also going to rely on his canoe to uh, traverse some uh, new uh, areas. So one of the good things about this game is there's no uh, monster encounters in rivers and lakes. So unlike the first Final Fantasy. So now Min, we're going to take off his equipment because uh, we're going to sell it because he'll be in the back row. Uh, he'll be in the back row. I thought that was a, a copper plate, but I read it wrong. So, uh, but yeah, I'll end up taking that off and selling it. So uh, we can sell that uh, stuff that Min has there for some good uh, money to help us buy some new equipment that we want. Press select, and you can bring up that little option there to move Min to the back row, which is what we're going to do. So, um, come back in our next episode where we start uh, using Min's canoe and uh, start going to try to find Joseph and Salman. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.